Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel and in this video I'm going to be talking about equipment, canning equipment, the things that you need to can. So it's just that simple. But this might be a longer than normal video because I'm actually going to do it in three sections. The first section I'm going to do is purely what you absolutely need to be canning. That what you have to have to can safely, properly and all those good things in your home. So that's going to be the first section. The second section is what you should have. Now what you should have is just stuff that you can probably get along forever, forever without having it, but it's just kind of nice, kind of handy to have around. And the third section is what you can have. The way you can have, you can have a bunch of stuff that you will probably never need. You can get by without it. It's usually just cool gadgets. And if you're a gadget person like me, I am a gadget girl. I love it. So I have it, but you can get along absolutely fine without it. So let's get started on what you absolutely must have to start canning. Okay, here we are at the Bare Essentials and I'm going to do the canning uh, vessel, like the canners, after I go through this basic, basic equipment. The very first thing that, and, and people may have different opinions, this is just mine and this is just trying to help you out and give you some ideas. So if I miss something, sorry. I don't write scripts, I just wing it. So I put all this stuff out for me to remember. So the first thing I think is the most important thing for you to have is a good resource, a good resource for, um, for canning with uh, safe recipes, approved, researched, all that kind of good stuff. So the one I really, really like is the Complete Guide to Home Canning. And the reason I particularly like this one is because if you just Google Complete Guide to Home Canning, it will take you to the USDA or the National Center of food, Home Food Preservation, where you can literally download every single chapter in this book. I have this downloaded on my tablet. I have it on my phone so that if I'm ever in, a say, a farmer's market or at Costco, what the heck, I can look and say, oh, if I want to make this recipe, this is how much of that stuff I'll need. So I love having this downloaded. So this is awesome. Also, uh, and there's a lot of them, but this one is another awesome one, the So Easy to Preserve book. I love that. But either way, you absolutely need to have at least one really good resource for canning. The second thing that's ever so important is making sure that you've got the right size jar for whatever it is you're making. So for here, there's quarts, there's pints, wide mouth, there's always wide mouth and narrow mouth, there's the little jelly jars, and then there's the squatty four ounce, so there's like, those two are the same amount, believe it or not. These two are the same amount, they just have different tops. So whether it's wide mouth or regular mouth isn't a make it or break it deal. It's just that you need to make sure that you've got the right tops for them. And you always want to make sure that you have the right size jar for the recipe that you're doing. So if something says to do it in half pint or pint jars, it doesn't mean to save time you can fill it up in a quart jar because that's all you have. So always make sure you review your recipe and you've got the right size jar for the process or for whatever you're making. And along with jars always goes canning lids. So there's a lot of different kind of canning lids. I'm using the four jars lids right now and I'm really loving them. They're a nice quality lid and they make wide, wide mouth and they make regular mouth lids. So I love them and I have had no fails. So they're good. There's a lot of other kind of uh, lids that you can use. There are reusable lids called Tattlers. There's those kind, there's ball, there's different ones, but I'm liking the four jars right now. Love their lids. But with the lids is going to come the rings. Now there's a wide mouth and a narrow mouth or a regular mouth ring. And you have to make sure that you've got the right lid and the right ring for the jars that you're using. So that's pretty simple, pretty, pretty common sense. Now as far as equipment equipment goes, you have to have something to accurately measure your ingredients. So don't wing it. That cannot be good. So you always have to make sure you've got something to accurately measure your ingredients. It could be a Pyrex thing like this. It could be measuring cups. It could be anything, but you want to make sure that your recipes are being accurately measured. So there's the one thing. The second thing, you want to make sure you've got a good tool to be able to mix it and stir it and do all the things that are required in the recipe for it to process correctly. 
I like this little one because it's got a little hook and I can hang it over the edge of the pot. That's awesome. But if you just have a, a regular ladle or a big spoon, that's fine too. But you always want to make sure that you've got something that you can navigate through the food that you're in your recipe that you're using. Now, to put it in the jar, you want to make sure that you've got a good funnel. This one is kind of a cool one. It's by Ball, and it kind of squishes up so it can be a regular mouth. It can fit right in there, or it can be wide mouth. So that's good. I like this funnel. So you want to make sure that you've got some kind of a ladle and a funnel. Now, when you are putting food in your jars, you need to debubble. Oftentimes, most of the time, you're going to debubble. So you want something that you can go down in your jar around the food and debubble, which means to get the little air bits out from between the food because if there's air in there when it processes and the air is, is exited or air evacuated, the food is going to settle down and it's going to leave too much room at the top and you don't want that. So you want something that's going to accurately uh, debubble and you don't want to use a metal knife or a metal spoon or the handle on a metal ladle because the metal can actually scratch micro scratches on the inside of a jar can cause the jar to break in processing so you don't want to do that but there's cool little spatulas like this you can use that if you don't have a spatula you can use a plastic knife those work fine and I would bet you almost everyone has a plastic knife somewhere in their house if not go to get a fast food or something get a plastic knife keep it in your canning supplies now in order to put the lids on the jars you want to make sure that you've got a, a good lid lifter this means you're going to take these lids and put them in I put them in warm water, um, read the instructions for the jars, but you want to be able to lift them out and place them on the jar without getting your hand in there to grab the, the lid. So you want to just pick up a lid here. Let me get a, let me get a lid. Okay, these are used, but we'll use these as an example. So let's say these are in a little bowl with hot water and you want to lift, lift them out. So you just want to have a good lid lifter where you can lift this, this is a regular mouth, and put it on your jar, and then put the ring around it. So you wanna do that, and for closing your jar, nothing special here, I do have a tool, but I don't even think they sell that tool anymore, but you wanna bring it to where it just gets a little resistance and come back a little so that this will still allow air to escape. So you want a good lid lifter, that's important. And here's just a tip. When you're putting your lids in your bowl, put them alternate, like you put this one face down and this one face up, and then they won't get stuck together, so it's so hard to get them out. So that was just a tip. So I'm going to put these away. So you've got your lid lifter. This also can be used for debubbling, but I don't like to do that because when I debubble and then I turn it over to get the next lid, the stuff drips down. So I like to have a separate debubbler. Now, in order to get these things in and out of your pot, you need a pot lifter, jar lifter. Now these look all different ways. This is just kind of, uh, I think this is a Norpro brand is why it's red, which this is also a Norpro. Uh, balls tend to be green, but this is gonna pick your jars up no matter what size jar you have, whether you have this one or this one or even this big one, these are gonna pick your jars up to put them in and out of your can or whether it be a pressure canned a recipe or a boiling water canned recipe. So you need that. You also need something to put them on. I like this little canning mat. You can put them, lay a towel down. You could lay uh, some of these little uh, these racks, which I use for cooling my bread on. Those are also awesome to put these on a rack. Just something to set them on your counter that you don't want the hot jar to set directly down on the counter because oftentimes the counter is gonna be too cold and that hot jar can sit down there and it can crack it. It can also damage your counter because those are hot when they come out of a pressure canner. And the last thing I can think of for the absolutely, these kind of equipment is a good timer. You need something that's gonna accurately time your process. No matter what you do, um, I like this kind because I can write down on here um, when I'm pressure canning, you know, vent, uh, chem to pressure, all that stuff. And I can set different times for the different steps of a process but you just have to have a good timer. So now I'm gonna clear this away and I'm gonna to talk to you about the boiling water and pressure canner items, the, the containers that you can use. All right, let's talk about boiling water canners. Now here's the thing. Most of your canners are gonna be like this. They're gonna be a great big pot like this. 
Got a nice lid that fits on there. I like when they're clear because I like to look through. Um, another thing you always, always have to have is some sort of a rack to put in the bottom to keep your jars from touching directly to the bottom of any, any uh, vessel, whether it's pressure canning or boil water canning. Here's a different type of rack. And also there's actual, I call these jar lifters racks. So that can go in the bottom, put your jars in. And the thing is, you need those things to make sure that your jars are up off the bottom because that also helps the, the liquid, the water circulate to get them nice and warm. Now, the cool thing is about boil water canning is that you don't have to have a great big giant pot like this. So let's say you're just doing four small pint jars or four small jelly jars of a really small thing. You can just have a regular pot. That's the beautiful thing about boil water canning. Your pot just needs to be big enough that you can put your jars in and have at least an inch to two inches of water above the top of the jar. So this one is just perfect for little jelly jars. I love this one because it doesn't take so much water, it's easier, and you can even get the little jelly jar lifter racks. They have these at my little store that I did a little video on. Uh, you can order these, they're just called a mini rack, and they fit perfectly down in like a soup pot. So there's also one of these, I just don't know where it is right now, one of these that's small enough to go in there too. So I love it that you can use pretty much any size of pot as long as there's enough room for the proper amount of water at the top of your uh, jars. So there's those. Now I'm going to come talk to you about the pots that you have to have or the canners that you have to have for pressure canning. All right, now here is a have to have for pressure canning, and that would be a pressure canner. These are specifically made for canning. This one I left this way so I can show you how I store it because I think that's important to keep your, um, your things nice. But a pressure canner, here's a rack, you need to have a rack. A pressure canner is gonna have a gasket oftentimes, unless you have an All-American, I do not have those, so I'm not as familiar with those, but I'm sure that there are other people out there that will show you about American, All-American. I have my Presto canner. I've used these for a long time. I love these. This is the bigger one, and your canner must have a dial gauge or a weight. And this is the weight. And you also must have the instructions for your altitude. And if you look in any of your books, your recipe will always tell you, <laughs> look at how often I've used that one. Woo, it looks bad. But it'll tell you the altitude that you need, uh, the pressure that you need for the altitude. It'll also tell you the length of time you need to boil water can something based on your altitude. But your canner needs to have a dial gauge or a weight. I have both because mine were dial gauge, but I had them converted to be able to use a weight. And that way, um, this is what I have to have right there. That's a five pound weight for my pressure canner. So um, I can give you more information about that if you're interested, but there you go. This is what you have to have is a pressure canner, not a pressure cooker. And I will show you what the difference is. But this is the big one. I use this for a lot of stuff and this is big and it's heavy, and so that's something to consider. This is a smaller size one, and I know the All-American makes small ones. Look at all the, look at all these I have. Um, I know the All-American makes a smaller canner as well, but this is really old. This was like my grandma's, and this is a really old Presto, and I'll show you. If there's a rack in there, you guys wanna have your instructions. I've got racks in there. I just kind of have all this stuff in here that I need. There's one of my jar lifter racks inside there. And the reason I store it this way, I'm going to tell you, is I take crumbled up newspaper and I put in this. And oh, by the way, for a canner, a pressure pot or canner to be considered a canner, you have to be able to have four quart jars in it upright at least four quart jars with the lid going on if it's smaller than that it's not going to work and i'll show you what i mean so i take newspaper and put inside of there and after i've done things like meat or fish i might even put a little vinegar on the newspaper it will help take the odor out 
The other thing I do is I kind of make a wreath of paper, just a ring, and I put it around the edge. Then I take my lid with the dial gauge and I turn it upside down so that it doesn't kind of make dinks in the edges here. And I never use a spoon and kind of tap it on the edge because you want to make sure that that edge never gets like a, a dent in it. And then I just put my my little um, rack things there, my little my little dividers. They're, they're awesome because you can actually, if you're in a big boil water canner or a big pressure canner and you've got smaller jars and you can stack them, you just need to put a rack in between them. So this is what I use these for a lot. Now let's talk about that four quart situation. This is a pressure cooker. Do you see the difference? This is the smallest canner, and this is a pressure cooker. You see how small that is? And certainly, you are not going to be able to fit four quart jars in there and get the lid on. So you cannot pressure can in a pressure cooker. So this is just an FYI for you to see the difference between a cooker and a canner, okay? So you must have the proper vessel in order to pressure can. So those are your must-haves. All right, the last thing on my must-haves list is a way to accurately determine the headspace for your jar. Now they make these doodads, and these have like the quarter, um, let me see, quarter, half, three quarters, and one inch. And as you're filling your product, you put it in there like that to measure. You don't have to have one of these, you just need a way to measure. So I'm actually going to put this in uh, this uh, kind of the extra goodie because you can use a little tape measure. You can measure if you want. Just I know a person that actually would hold this up every time. She'd do the half inch and she always knew once she did it a couple times, she could know once she did it like, okay, that's where it needs filled to or okay, that's where it needs filled to. And then she could do the rest of her jars. Also, uh, I know people that will actually just take a piece of paper. If they know that everything she's, they're canning today is like uh, half an inch, they'll just take a measure, a little piece of paper, and put the half an inch mark. And this way, they can just hold that up every single time and see where the half an inch is. Or, if you're a sewer, you might have one of these things. And you can just slide this to say uh, three quarters of an inch. And you can just set that on the outside and you can measure. So there's a lot of ways that you can measure the proper headspace, but that's a must-have. Some way to properly determine your headspace. Not hard, just really important. And finally, a way to label your product. You always want to put the product. You want to write, especially if you're going to enter these in the fair, you want to write the product. You want to write the processing time and pressure, if it's a pressure can, or BW for boiling water. And you want to make sure that you have everything properly labeled. But did you know you can use a Sharpie? I do this all the time. I actually will write it on there when I can't, when I jar it up. And I put it in the processor when it comes out, however it's boiled water or pressure canned. Uh, it's already labeled, so that's pretty handy. So that's the last must-have that I think you should have. Now, we're going to go over to the things that you, you should have. They're handy. Okay, the should have is pretty simple. So first of all, you should have like a couple of resources, not just one. It's always nice to have a second one in case you have a question or uh, this rest, this book might have some other recipes so you don't get bored with everything that's in one book. But you, you should have more than one, but it's not imperative. Uh, you should also have a container. This is my big one, and this says used canning lids, okay for dry storage jars. So I actually take all of my lids after I take them off and I put them, after they're clean, I put them in here. And when I'm going to do something like store anything pretty much, dehydrated foods or something like I did here, let me pull this over, like these dehydrated fruit, I put them in there and that's an old canning lid that I came off of something that I can. So you should have a place to store your lids so that you're not throwing them away because you can use them for a lot of things and you're not going to have to use your, your brand new good lids for a dried product. So those are two should haves. Now let's get to the could have because those are oftentimes the most fun. All right, here we are at should have or could have. So here's the deal. If you're going to do boil water canning, first of all, let me do this, this one. Uh, you could have this handy ball fresh tech boiling water canner. 
Now I have one of these, if you watched my salsa video, you will have seen that it died, sadly. But I, I have to say, I can't, I can't get mad about that because I used the heck out of it. But anyway, this is the Ball Fresh Tech Boiling Water Canner and it is awesome because you can set this. Now this is a could have, you can get along without it. But I can kind of justify it because I'm getting older. I don't like to lift the weight or have the boiling water so much on my stove. Super convenient for me to be able to set this next to my sink because it's got this little spigot. I put my jars in there, I boil water can them. It also leaves the stove top free so this isn't taking up space on my stove top. Kind of that's real estate on your stove that's getting wasted. I like it, I can justify owning it. Um, and also when the jars are done, you don't have to lift that big pot to go dump it. You can just open the spigot and let it drain into the sink. So you could have this. I have it, I use it, I love it, okay? So there's that. Now, let's say you're gonna be boil water canning something that doesn't take more than 40 minutes. I like to say 30 to be on the safe side, I'm a safety girl, but 40 minutes, if you wanted to, you could have a steam canner. Now this is the way this steam canner looks. There's different steam canners. There's one that like, kind of basically it's upside down. It's got a pot on the bottom with the top. But this steam canner will double as a boil water canning canner. It's actually called a stainless steel dual use canner. And so you can see um, it can be a water bath or steam canner. Love it, but it has a special knob on the top for steam canning. So I did a video about steam canning, but it's awesome because if you're processing something for less than 40 minutes, you can just put the uh, water in the bottom. You only need, I think it's like, I have to read the instructions, like three inches of water or two inches of water, and it builds up steam inside of here. Your jars are sitting on a rack in there, and you just watch this little guide, and when this little dial gets to your altitude, then you start timing. So you can steam can. I like this because then I just don't have to use so much water and I have to drag out this other tool and this is lightweight and it works great. So you could have a steam canner. You don't have to, but you could. And now, probably, um, one of the things, I showed you this already, you could have this to measure, um, it's also like a debubbler. But you could have this to measure your uh, jar headspace if you wanted to, but you don't have to. But then here is uh, probably the silliest thing. This is my most recent thing, and this is because I think this would be fun because it's just so simple. You could have a Fresh Tech automatic jam and jelly maker if you wanted to have it. You could have this. You don't need it. You can make jam without it. Super simple, but the cool thing about this is it's going to do all your stirring for you. It's just different, but you're kind of limited to the recipes that come in the book. So there's going to be some jams and jellies I'm not going to be able to make in this. But just the fact that I can convene, you think I wouldn't care now that I'm retired and I have more time, but I think it's just the effort. <laughs> um, so this is going to be cool just to make basic jams and jellies. They have a bunch of recipes and they have uh, modifications to the recipes so that you can add things to it and make it a little bit different each jam and jelly. So that's kind of super cool. So I'm gonna try that. And actually, I'm gonna be doing a uh, Jam It Up June, and I'm gonna be doing my recipe in this because that will be the first time this is gonna be a, a maiden voyage on this. So you could have this. Now those three things, the ball boiling water canner, the Fresh Tech Jam and Jelly Maker, and the steam canner are all in my Amazon store. So if you're interested and you're a gadget person like me, you can get those there. It's just a link, and I'll tell you what, that helps my channel. So, um, and speaking of helping my channel, if you have not subscribed, please do. And if you haven't hit that little bell and like button, do that too. It really helps me. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you that you could have is one of these doodads. And this is a, a container that you can put your jars in. And you put your jars in here, and it kind of, there's people that have tons of these on their shelves, and they stack them. Um, I think they're too expensive for that. I just am not, I think they're just too expensive for that. Uh, but I like, I have at least one of these because this is what I'll put things in if I'm going uh, somewhere with a bunch of jars of canned goods. 
I will put them in here and that keeps them from banging together and it just keeps them safer like on a car ride or transporting them. So there's that. So I think I've touched all the bases. I may have missed something here or there, but I think you get the main overall gist of what you must have, you should have, and you could have. So there you go. I hope this helps. I hope it gave you a little bit of entertainment thinking about all the craziness that could happen around canning and home preservation. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.